Um, this guy really making videos during the day. Also, I moved my mattress. It's no longer here. It's here. Yeah. It's about time I made a video on the San Francisco Shock. One of the most popular teams in the league has had some of the most popular talent on its roster and had one of the best rosters of all time. It's got an unbelievable amount of names that have flown through it. Is it going to look different in 2022? Let's find out. Here's a hint. Yes. Okay, we might as well just start with the obvious in listing all of the players that have left the team or moved to another one or retired. So we'll start from the top, go to the bottom, kind of. There's not going to be an order, but we're just going to go through it. Choi, retired. FD God, Team Peps, which is a French team. Nero has gone to Reign. Tayo is now a streamer for Zeta Division. Twilight, Defiant. Arns, Gladiators. Smurf, Dynasty. Striker, Boston. Again, full circle. Almost all the players that you have seen over the last couple of years have been scattered like artifacts from the 2000s cartoon shows Shaolin Showdown, but they have kept Super and Violet on their roster. Super, face of the league, basically, and Violet, one of the most goated support players and part-time DPS players in the league. They have picked up three new players in a form of a buy one buy two get one free kind of deal a three pack of players from o2 blast and i want to compare the o2 blast to like a convenience store at this point teams going in picking up players whatever they like and then just walking straight out again it's insane how many players have come from o2 blast this season and the san francisco shock or even the past to be fair and the san francisco shock have picked up three of them finn proper and kilo uh they've also brought over s9mm who is sam uh if you can't read Leech Speak, what are you doing here? Uh, from Redbird Esports. We we'll start with the DPS. There's three of them, brand new. Like I said, Sam, Proper, Kilo. Uh, Proper, I feel like, has been destined for the league for a long time. Uh, he joined O2 Blast back in 2019. Like I said, they're like a convenience store at this point. Like Proper was going to make it in. He just needed to turn 18. That was the that was the big that was the big thing. That's normally a big hurdle that you have to kind of overcome. Uh, not something that you can even prep for. You just have to turn 18, and that's about it. Um, so proper, no surprise to see him in the league and on the San Francisco Shock. Almost perfect, especially since you picked up two other players from O2 Blast that he's already going to have synergy with. Um, he was a young superstar that has played with a ton of players before that have been in the league and out of the league. And Myeongbong, Mandu, Krong, Tuba. Uh, and more on O2 Blast, like this guy's played with some of the best players in the world and a lot of players uh, are in the league now. Some of them have made it to the league and then uh, retired, but he's played with so many good players that it's no surprise that he's here on the San Francisco Shock. He also played with Kilo for a while and uh, should be a good DPS duo, if you keep that in mind. A little bit of synergy going into Overwatch 2, if you haven't seen the news by the way, um, as of yesterday on the 10th of the 3rd or 3rd of the 10th for my American friends, they did announce the Overwatch 2 beta and alpha and the, uh, all the details surrounding the league as well. So we kind of know what's going to happen. So uh, Sojourn is going to be playable from day one in the Overwatch League, which is pretty exciting. Um, so kind of all this speculation has been laid to rest or at least some of the speculation. There's still a lot there. Uh, but anyway... Uh, when doing uh, an almost complete rebuild of a team like the San Francisco Shock are doing, it's pretty good to bring on players that have had pre-baked synergy for a fair while at this point. So Proper and Kilo, who have played together before on O2 Blast, now go joining the San Francisco Shock, they're going to have a major head start above almost every other team that hasn't done the same kind of thing um, when they're looking to pick up DPS. If you're picking up DPS from several other teams, then yeah, they're not going to be as synergistic as a proper and Kilo are who came from O2 Blast. Now, Sam um, has many contenders titles on various teams at this point. So uh, another American DPS superstar coming in. He has played for Red Buddy Sports, uh, American Tornado, Dark Mode NA, and honestly... You're looking at a lot of the players from those teams over the last couple of years. 
Sam being on one of those, and all the other players that are suddenly making it to the league, like Redbird Esports and American Tornado are becoming the O2 Blast, Runaway, Element Mystic kind of teams, but for North America. They are feeder teams into the league, which is really good to see. I think a third DPS isn't a bad thing at all. The hero pool for DPS is only going to get bigger, I can imagine. And Sam being with Proper and Kilo, not too bad whatsoever. Um, he's not going to have any pre-baked synergy with them coming into the San Francisco Shock, but I'm pretty sure that won't matter too much. You can kind of rely on Proper and Kilo if you really want to. Of course, they have been phenomenal DPS players to begin with. And not only that, with new players coming into the league like Sam, Proper and Kilo, another thing to keep in mind is that the coaching staff at the San Francisco Shock hasn't really changed at all. So there's still a championship level winning uh, coaching staff so having new players coming into the roster, it's the same thing as kind of the Shanghai Dragons then bring in new players from contenders that have not played into the league. They're going to be more than okay. They're studying under the best coaches and analysts out there. Krusty is still on the team as well as 9k actually rejoining the team. So it's going to be pretty exciting to see what he can do in Overwatch 2. But like I said, new players under experienced leadership in managerial roles and coaching and staffing roles like is pretty insane now let's go on to the tanks real quick of course super staying the king is sitting on top of his money throne and remains on the team um unfortunately i'm sorry that does mean he probably is not going to play dps maybe someone else can play tank real quick so super can jump on the genji again is that going to happen probably not but still, having Super back in on the team is great. He is kind of the face of the league at this point and face of the team, which is which is awesome to see San Francisco Shot continuing to uh, pay Super large amounts of money to play a game that he loves. So that's uh, that's great. That's fantastic. It really is. Um, is He's an amazing player, but also has a massive brand too. So that definitely helps the Shock coming into the next season. I can't imagine they're going to lose too many fans, to be honest with you, especially with Violet and Super still on the roster. Now, looking at the supports, like I said, Violet is staying, which is great. They also have Finn coming onto the roster too from O2 Blast. And if you haven't picked up on it already, there ain't really a Lucio player on the team. Not good uh, at all. We have, I say we, me, maybe the comments. I don't know. But I think Dive uh, and maybe Double Sniper is going to be... I think for the meta, I think Lucio is going to be very, very key, of course. Always has been in things like Rush and Dive and whatnot. And not having a Lucio on your team, kind of bad. Lucio being an extremely strong character, of course, the only speed up in the game. So you kind of need someone to be able to at least pilot that hero somewhat proficiently. Violet, although he has a massive hero pool, isn't a Lucio player. They've gotten rid of their Lucio players in uh, FD God, which is kind of a disappointment, to be honest. I would like to see FD God continue into this new game. Uh, I'm not sure what the decision was behind that, because he is a fantastic Lucio player. I actually remember meeting him at one of the homestands when he flew in from France, had four hours sleep, was still awake somehow, sitting in the uh, in the backstage area, the green room, and I was chatting to him saying like, how are you alive? Sorry, you're, I think it was New York, uh, I believe it was. I was like, how are you alive still? Like, how are you uh, uh, willing to play right now? It's, it's crazy. I'm surprised they hadn't kept him. He's an aggressive Lucio player, and he loves to just get in people's faces and dominate. Even though the back line does look pretty stacked, I don't think that the support line is going to be one to be super happy about because of the lack of Lucio player. A few other teams also don't really have a Lucio player on their squad, and it feels like you kind of need that, at least in my head, with the idea of dive being a thing. We need a Lucio player on every team. It just has to be. I'm disappointed they got rid of FT God. I really am. And I think the support might actually be the weakest uh, point in this roster right now, even though they have Violet. I still think not having that pick is is going to be a problem for them. The tanks, a tank in uh, super, perfectly fine. Uh, I'd happily die on a hill and say he'll do pretty well, or like exceptionally well, I can imagine. And the DPS, although being fairly new to the league, pretty damn brand new. They've all come from teams that have been successful in their uh, in their regions, North American, Korea, and they're under experienced coaching leadership as well. So the for me, honestly, the pain point is going to be the, the support line. Overall, I think the roster does look pretty damn good. The only issue is 
A lot of other teams in the league have stuck with the majority of their rosters, only slotting a couple of players here in here and there. And the Shock have almost done a complete rebuild, only keeping Super and Violet. They have, of course, kept their coaching staff and added 9k back in. There's been a couple of changes there, but I still think that is at a championship kind of winning level uh coaching staff and backroom staff but the start of the season i think is going to be rough for the shock i don't think you can really argue against that they are brand new players that have come into the league from contenders and it's going to be up to super and violet to kind of lead the team in game to find success a lot of other teams have stuck with majority of their rosters and they will have the upper hand at the start of the season at least that is going to be it for this video hope you enjoyed this small preview of the san francisco shop for 2022 like and subscribe and that's about it see ya